Emily Carr's House of All Sorts, Chapter 4, Old Attic. The attic was no older than the rest of the house, yet, from the first to me, it was very old. Old in the sense of dearness. Old as the baby you hug and call dear old thing. It's not old in years, but just in the way he has tangled himself around your heart, has become part of you so that he seems always to have existed as far back as memory goes. That was the way with my attic. Immediately I came into the house, the attic took me, just as if it had always homed me, became my special corner, the one place really my own. The whole house, my flat, even my own studio, was more or less public. People could track me down in any part of the house or even in the garden. Nobody ever thought of tracking me up in my old attic. I had a fine bedroom off the studio, but I kept that as a guest room, preferring to sleep in my attic. A narrow, crooked little stair in one corner of the studio climbed to a balcony, no more than a lower lip outside the attic door. If people could not find me about house or garden, they stood in the studio and shouted, out I popped on the tiny balcony, high up on the studio wall, like a cuckoo poop peeking out of a clock. In the attic, I could wallow in tears or in giggles, and nobody saw. There was an outer hall and front door shared by the doll's flat and my own. If the doorbell rang while I was in my attic, I stuck my head out the window of the gable without being seen and called, who? Down in a second. That gave me a chance to change my face. Those experienced in landladying told me, develop the landlady face. My dear, not soft, not glad, not sorry, just blank.